The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Is that good now, Andrew? Yes, we're ready to go, Di. Okay. All right, just like to welcome you all and thank you for coming in tonight. Um, Andrew Byrne from SBTS will be taking us through the recent enhancements that we've made to the mating predictor, um, particularly to include inbreeding coefficients. Um, it's also an opportunity to test the use of webinars as a presentation tool. This concept is still in the trial phase, but feedback on webinars run so far has been positive and it's hoped that we will be able to use webinars uh, for future presentations. Um, we just have a few housekeeping things we need to go through. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, um, e.g. no sound, can you please call the number um, that's showing up on your screen. Um, to ask the presenter questions, you can simply type your question in the questions field and submit. That um, dialog box that is open does tend to minimise sometimes, so if you do want to type a question and it's minimised, you just need to bring it back up on your screen and type the question. Um, and it's just a good idea to give your mouse um, a bit of a move around every now and then just to make sure your screen saver doesn't come up and um, come over the top of the webinar. Uh, so I'd like to now pass on to Andrew to give everyone the presentation. Thank you very much, Di, and uh, welcome everyone. Um, so obviously, as Di said, is a, a new extension tool and a way of getting some information out to uh, members across all the, the breeds participating in the SBTS project. But tonight, um, obviously, is we're trialling it for the, the Murray Gray uh, members. Um, what we're going to be taking you through tonight, as Di said, is the recent enhancements which have been made to the mating predictor tool that is available with the internet solutions uh, services that are available uh, through the Murray Gray website. So some of you, you may have been familiar with this service. Uh, it has been there um, for, for a little while, but there have been a, a number of enhancements made in the last little while. So as, as Di said, I would encourage you to try and uh, ask questions as we go along. We try and make these webinars as interactive as, as possible. So if you find the question box on your screen, um, type in the questions. We'll stop as we go along and try and answer those questions. So we'll go in now and have a look at it. Where we need to start off with this and to get into the mating predictor is to start off at, at the Murray Gray website. So you can see you should have the, uh, the Murray Gray website in front of you now. So that address, which hopefully will be familiar to most of you, will be www.murraygray.com. .au. So basically once you, you put that into your internet, you bring up um, the, the Murray Gray website. We don't have a direct link into the mating predictor facility at the moment, uh, but that's something which we'll be looking at. So the first thing you need to do is really just get into the internet solutions facilities which are available from Murray Gray. So any of these options across the top, uh, whether it be member login, sale catalogue, semen catalogue or animal inquiry, will get you into the area where we can then access the mating predictor. So for this example, we'll just click on the animal inquiry and that takes us into this internet solutions type of um, tools. So you've got the ability to search, as, as most of you will be aware, on different animal details, different EBV details, um, member details, online sales, semen catalogues and some of these services over here download files, online transactions and, and the tag inquiry, which are specific um, to people once you log on with your username and your password. So if we go over here to access this mating predictor which we're going to show you tonight, it's just a simple matter of clicking on um, this mating predictor link and that will then take us into the mating predictor facility. Now you can see that the welcome screen which comes up basically um, gives you, you can see down here, the options. You have the option of putting in a sire a dam um, and their particular identifier, so that refers to um, their number effectively, uh, their you know, herd and tattoo as recorded with the Breed Society, with Murray Grays. You also have the ability not only to put in an individual sire, an individual dam, but a range of sires and dams within this program, within those fields, or you can do some um, searches across different dam calving years and those kind of things, which we'll go in and have a look at it uh, later on as to what we're talking about there. 
So if we, I suppose we look at what, what this really is looking at is for you to be able to do some predictions about the matings that you might be considering. So you have at a base level I suppose the ability to put in a, a sire, a dam and see what the expected outcome um, from that mating you might see in terms of the progeny. So if we take an example here and I'll, I've just plucked two animals at random off the Murray Gray database. So if we know the sires identifier we type in so AMU5 and obviously with the Murray Grays we need a space there between the, the herd and the, the taboo. For a dam, we know we've got a dam at home. In this case, we'll take MCA A63. So you just need to enter in the, the sire identifier, the dam identifier at a, at a base level, and go through and click on the search button. Now what that search will do is that will then bring up the results or the expected outcome from that particular mating. So you can see at, at the first level here, we get the sire. And in this case, it's Willow Liquor Uplift, which is the sire that we specified. And it has the EBVs, the current EBVs of that particular sire. It also has below that the dam and, and a display of the dam that we specified and her particular EBVs. Below that is where we, we come in. We have the expected average progeny value. So this is basically the expected EBVs of the progeny from this particular mating. So you can see we have that over here, so we'd expect the progeny of that mating to have these particular EBVs. Now there's nothing um, particularly complex about those EBVs which display. They are simple mid-parent values, so um, if, if you look at any of these EBVs, I suppose for, for carcass weight here, we've got a sire at plus 50, a dam at plus 45. The expected um, mid-parent value, I suppose the expected progeny value that we're looking at is halfway there, which would be 47 and a half, or in this case it's rounded to display as plus 48. So it just gives you the expected EBVs, um, which are expected bid parent values from any particular mating that you specify. So that that is um, that, that's the the um, main bit of information. Now that information has been available for quite some time. So um, th there's nothing new about that. Some of the enhancements which are now available, which we'll have a look at, is if you come up the top and you see up here you've got two different options. The first one is to show EBV accuracy and the second one is to show the um, index values. So if you click on the show EBV accuracies, we'll now start to see some, as well as the EBVs of the sire, we get the accuracies of the sire. Um, in terms of the dam, we get the dams, EBVs and the accuracies of the dams EBVs and below that in now as well as having the, the mid-parent EBVs we also have effectively the expected accuracy of the EBVs from this progeny uh, of this, this mating so and that's based on the amount of information that is available now so obviously if we regenerated this calf um, this is the kind of accuracies we'd be looking at starting at these accuracies would go up um, as time progresses um, kind of as we've recorded more performance information. Now you'll note um, these accuracies are not a simple mid-parent value. So if you like, we use the carcass weight um, with the EBVs, we've got plus 50, plus 45, we've got a simple mid-parent value there um, for the EBV. The accuracy, we've got plus 85 here for the sire, 65 for the dam. The expected um, accuracy of the for the progeny here is not halfway between it, and that's just um, a result of the way that the accuracy is displayed in that it's, it's not displayed on a linear scale, um, more a logarithmic scale and so we don't come out in exactly in between. So that's just something else to be aware of. But you can see now we've got the EBVs and the accuracies of the sire and the dam and we also get the expected EBVs and expected accuracies of the outcome of this particular mating. The other thing which we've got up here, if we go back up the top, is the ability to come in and show the index values. So this is effectively the same thing as the EBVs, but now we're looking at the, the breed object selection indexes. So if we click on that link, you'll now see on your screen that we've also got the three index values of the sire, three index values of the dam, and now the expected um, index value of the progeny from this particular mating. So, and as you can see, these ones, as with the EBVs, are just simple mid-parent values. So it's 
plus 79, plus 71, halfway between those, we'd expect the progeny on average to come out at plus 75. So it's just an indication there as you go along um, and you're looking at any particular mating as to what the expected outcome will be. Now as well as those two enhancements, we now also on this mating predictor display some indications about the level of expected inbreeding from this particular mating. So there's a, a couple of different statistics regarding that inbreeding. So if we come over here and we have a look, we've got this inbreeding coefficient and 1%. Now the inbreeding coefficient is really just a, a way of um, displaying the expected level of inbreeding. Now just to give you an idea as to you know, what, what level of um, inbreeding we're looking at, say when we're looking at 1%, if you click on this inbreeding coefficient link, it'll take you through to some fairly detailed help documentation that, that gives you an understanding or a feel for these inbreeding coefficient numbers. So if you consider, if we look down here in this typical inbreeding coefficients, if we have a, a half sib mating, so we have two animals being uh, mated together and they're by the same sire or um, out of the same dam, we'd expect an inbreeding coefficient value of around 12.5%. Likewise, if we were just looking at animals and they had a common great-grandparent, we're looking at 3.1% um, inbreeding coefficient. So that'll give you a feel for, for what the different level of inbreeding coefficients mean. The obvious question is, well, at what level does this become a, a problem um, or is, you know, is it too much inbreeding and should we start to steer away from it? There are many different trains of thoughts on, on this, um, but the, the guide that we've been given that that we've been uh, giving out comes from the dairy industry where I think from our information they're starting to look at levels of around 10% or higher on individual animals they would be starting to, to have some concerns. So that might be where we're starting to get some um, poorer performance due to inbreeding depression and, and higher we go the more likely we might run into some genetic defects and those kind of things. So as a rough guide um, we're using that 10%. To be honest, if you, if you look across the database, you'll get a feel for it fairly quickly and you don't seem to see many animals above that 5% level. So um, you'll get, get a feel for that, but this help documentation gives you a bit more of an understanding of how this level of inbreeding is just displayed as the inbreeding coefficient. So if we just go back now, you can see here this, we get this um, inbreeding coefficient of, of 1%. So in this case, we'd say, well, We'd be quite comfortable uh, mating these, this sire and this dam together. We wouldn't expect um, any inbreeding problems. The other two statistics relating to inbreeding, um, which we also receive here, is also some information about how much information was available, how much pedigree information had been recorded with the Murray Gray Society to allow us to calculate this different um, inbreeding coefficient value over here. Obviously, one of the, the limitations that we have when calculating that inbreeding coefficient is exactly how much pedigree information has been recorded for these two animals. If we take the extreme case where the sire and the dam may have no pedigree information recorded, then when we run this, this inbreeding coefficient calculation, we get a 0%. Now that may not be telling us that the animals are inbred, they may in fact be inbred, but because the pedigree information hasn't been recorded, then there's no way that this analysis can come up and um, give you an accurate kind of inbreeding level. So this minimum and average number of generations is really trying to give you, um, I suppose, an indication of how reliable that inbreeding coefficient value should be. And the minimum number of generations just looks at the pedigree tree of this sire and this dam and shows you the minimum number of generations that pedigree is available on those two animals. So in this case, if you look back through their pedigrees, they have in any branch of that uh, pedigree tree, a minimum of six generations of pedigree has been recorded. Likewise, the second figure is the average. So it's giving you the average number of generations which have been recorded across the different branches of the pedigree tree. So in this case, there's a minimum number of six generations of pedigree available, and on average, there are 10 generations of pedigree um, available when we calculate that inbreeding coefficient number. So you'd have quite a bit of confidence in that inbreeding coefficient number that it was giving you a, a good indication of the predicted level of inbreeding. So there the, the information there that's available on inbreeding, and that'll give you a guide, I suppose, if you're looking at planning these matings, 
not only of the expected um, genetic merit of the outcome of these matings in terms of their EBVs and their indexes, but also whether you're going to run into any problems with inbreeding. Just to, to help you with a bit more information there, you also have this link here titled pedigree display of this mating. If you click on that link, that will then give you um, the pedigrees of these two particular animals. So you can see at the top here, um, we have the sire um, and the sire's pedigree. And obviously we can go in, as with anything on this, this internet solutions, click on any of these particular um, uh, links and it will take you to that animal detail page. Down below it we also have the, the dam pedigree um, and her particular pedigree tree so we can compare the sire and the dam there and see whether they have any pedigree in common or not. And You can do that just when you, as you're planning your matings now um, looking at the pedigrees of these particular animals. Below the pedigree trees you also have the predicted EBV graph of the progeny from this particular mating. So Many of you will be familiar with, with that um, EBV graph. Effectively, it's just a, a graphical representation of those mid-parent EBVs which were displayed on the previous page. And we, for the purposes of this um, webinar, we really don't have time to go through and explain uh, you know, to go through and explain how to interpret this EBV graph. But what I would encourage you to do is, if you have any uh, questions on how to interpret it to give either Di or myself a call tomorrow and we can take you through it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, so th that's probably the best bit there, but really it's just displaying the, the EBVs in a more user-friendly manner than just in the EBV table. So you can see if we go back now to the, the, the first page that came up, that's really a summary of the, the different bits of information which you can now find from this um, enhanced mating predictor. So it gives you just in summary um, the sire, so the sire you specify, its EBVs and accuracies, the dam that you specify, its EBVs and accuracies, and then the expected um, EBVs and expected accuracies of the outcome of that particular mating or the progeny that you would generate if you mated those two animals together. Also gives us the same thing on a, an index value and then gives you some information um, to aid you with, with that uh, mating decision as well in terms of the expected level of uh, inbreeding, the amount of information that's gone into calculating that inbreeding coefficient and then also the ability to look at the pedigrees and the expected EBV chart. So it's quite a useful tool I think now um, and, and this is just looking at, at a base level here of actually being able to put in one sire and one dam. It also has uh, significantly more um, capability than that which we'll go in it and show you in a second. What we might do now is, is just break for some, um, some questions. We've got a couple of questions um, that, that's come in. Um, the first one that came in was, can you search using the cow rather than the bulls? So you basically get multiple bulls with a single cow on one page instead of the bull on its own page. And you certainly can, um, and we'll go in and actually have a look at how you can do that in a second. So I might not answer that uh, question right now, um, but please, if I don't answer that question by the end of the presentation, then please pull me up on it again. The uh, second question we had was um, in terms of the generations, what does the 6 and the 10 mean? So hopefully now we, we've answered that. It's just giving an indication of the number of generations of pedigree which were available um, in the calculation of that inbreeding coefficient. Um, the next question that's come in, which is, is further to that first one we looked at, was if we're going to um, use embryo transfer for a cow, um, so one particular cow, and then multiple bulls, um, it's easier that's that way, and you certainly can do that. So we'll, we'll go in and, and show you that in a second. Um, I might just throw over to Di now, just to see if, if she also has any other questions. So Di, you've been receiving a few questions there. Um, have you got anything else? Uh, we've got two questions here. The first one is, what if I only know the sire's name? Okay, so in this case, if we, if we go back to the, the mating predictor, um, we only got the option at the moment to put in the sire identifier and the dam identifier. Now, this is, is one thing which we're looking at. Um, we are also looking at the ability to have another field here 
called SIRE identifier, uh, sorry, SIRE name, so that you have the ability, if you're not sure of the SIRE identifier, to actually put in the SIRE's name. Now, that, that will hopefully be coming shortly. Um, at the moment, it's not available, so really what you need to do is go back to the, the EBV inquiry um, system. So you, you click back there, and in the SIRE's name field, you, you'd enter in your, your name, that would bring up the identifier of the animal and you could just simply copy and paste that across. So if we just have a look at that, um, in this case um, we had I think Willaluka Uplift, so if we type in the sire that we used and we click on that and we can see here that that will bring up the, the results of that. So we then click on that animal's link and it will display the animal's identifier up the top here. So um, I'll just wait for the computer to catch up to me. So here we've got AMU5. All you would need to do would then be highlight that particular ident, copy that. So you just use a right mouse clip, uh, click and come down and copy that. Go back to the mating predictor, right mouse click again in that top field, click on paste and you'd be away. So that at the moment, or the only way you can do it is to go back to that EBV inquiry, put in the sire's name, and um, work out what the sire's basically ident is from there. But in, as I said, in time, we're hoping to actually have a sire's name field there as well. So hopefully that answers that one. Um, was there one more question, Di? Um, yep. The second question is: Can I access the inbreeding coefficient for existing animals? Okay. Um, at the moment, we're not displaying the actual inbreeding coefficient for existing animals. So um, that, that is, is one limitation. What you are able to do, though, is if you know the animal's sire and dam, you can put that into this particular facility. So put in the sire and the dam and actually generate a mating prediction, if you like, which will give you an indication of the level of inbreeding in the animal which you've already generated. So you can do a bit of uh, retrospective work there. Uh, one of the limitations with that at the moment is the dam does still have to be active. So if you've got a current animal, you're trying to work out what its inbreeding coefficient is, you put in its sire and its dam and click on search using the mating predictor, it will only work if that dam still has a status of active with the Murray Gray Society. So um, that's, that's one limitation at the moment, but you certainly can try and get around that um, at the moment. Now, um, that, that probably brings up, I think, all the questions that we've got at the moment. We might now go in and start to look at some of the different options that we have um, to, to put in multiple animals. So the first one we'll look at, we'll look at a similar type of, um, we'll just clear this search here, a similar type of mating that we had, but instead of having one sire, we also have multiple dams. Oh, sorry, instead of just having one sire and one dam, we've got multiple sires that we're looking at, plus one particular dam that we're trying to plan the mating for. So in this case, we'll put in the dam first. So we'll put in exactly the same dam that we had before. And we have then here now got, I've just got uh, four sires, which we've just chosen at random. So we'll go in, we'll put those in. We've got AMU5 again, um, GJBZ36, um, GA22O, and LSYY47. So they're just sires that we've chosen at random. Um, we could then, to display these on a, so we look at the, that one particular dam with the available size, down the bottom in this display results by field, we just need to change that to dam. So hopefully this is getting back to the, the question which was answered before. If we then click on search, then that will then come through and you can see we've got the dam up the top and then we've got the different possible outcomes of the different matings down the page. So you can see the first one, we've got, we've got the dam and her EBVs. Below that, we've got the sire, and in this particular case, this sire that we talked about, and the expected uh, mid-parent values uh, from the outcome of that particular mating and inbreeding levels. We've got the next sire, its expected um, EBVs of the progeny there, plus the inbreeding coefficient. So you can see in this case, this animal here has actually come up and shown that if we mated those two animals together, then we would be up with a, an inbreeding coefficient of 90%, which may be a concern. So if we go back here, and you can see why that's at 90%, if we look at the pedigree display of this mating, 
um, you can see basically both of these animals here um, are by this the, that we're mating together are by this Monterey gotcha. So um, again, we're looking here at a half sib mating, which is giving us that level of, of inbreeding. So that's just to demonstrate what, what you can see. When you get that inbreeding coefficient, you can then go in and have a look at um, the, the pedigree. So you can see now we've got the dam, we've got the different size and the different possible combinations. We can then enhance that display by um, up the top here, clicking on show EBV accuracy. Uh, which comes down and puts the different accuracies into the equation and also the click on the show index values at the top which will go down and um, basically give you the, the index values as well. So you can, if, you, if you're planning your matings, you know, you've got a dam, um, as we said before, we might be looking to do some embryo transfer. We've got some, some possible size here which may or may not have semen available. We've put in the, the size we've got the dam and we can start to see the different outcomes that we'd expect from the mating. So we'd see what the expected EBVs were and um, the expected index values plus the different levels of inbreeding. So we can start to use this when planning our matings. Now obviously one of the, the limitations of this is the fact in this case we were just putting in one dam and multiple size. At a practical level you might be looking and saying well I've got all my cows coming up I've got the size which I'm interested in using. How can I go through and actually, um, you know, make my mating decisions? Now, if we go back to the the mating predictor, you can see here at the very top of the page, it's got a link here titled "For Enhanced Selection Criteria." Use the mating predictor after logging on here. So um, you've just got here below the enter selection criteria, we've got for enhanced selection criteria, use the main predictor after logging on here. So if we click on that here link, that will then take us through to the ability to log on as a unique member and um, as a unique Murray Gray member. So I'll come up with an example here and we'll just use uh, Richard Metcalf's herd in Western Australia as a bit of an example. Um, so we put in his uh, member ID and password and click on sign on. So that, that'll then log you in as a member. If you don't have a, a username and a password with the Murray Gray Society, then what I'll be looking at is contacting the Murray Gray office tomorrow, uh, whether that be Di or Rose, and they'll be able to set you up with a username and a password so you can log on and start looking at your particular animals. So that's logged us in now. So we're, we're basically logged in into this page. We then go back to the, the mating predictor link at the top. So we just click on that and that'll take us back into the mating predictor. But now you can see we've got one particular extra um, um, number or, or extra selection criteria that's available to us. And particularly that's the ability to select dams that are either all the dams in your ownership or probably more relevant, all those dams which are on your female imagery. So we'll take an example of how we can use this to its fullest extent. We know we've got the, the size, so we, we've selected our size that we're interested in using. So we'll put in their audience again. And again, we'll just use the same size we used a minute ago. So we just type those in. Okay, so we've got those four different sizes. Instead of putting in a particular dam, there, or a particular dam carving year, we're going to select all females um, on my imagery. Now we are limited here by how many are going to come up, so depending on how many dams you have on your imagery, um, you need to go and select the, the relevant number. Um, you also have some ability down here to display the results by the sire or the dam, as we hinted at before, and also the ability to search and sort the dams rather than on name, on ident or birth year and ident or birth date. So we'll leave that at name at the moment. Um, we'll leave that on 25. And we'll click on search, and at the moment we'll just leave this on sire. So we'll just it'll show you how that displays. So if we click on search, that'll take us through to the next screen. So while the, the computer crunches the numbers there. So you can see now, um, and we'll just show the EBV accuracies at the start, and show the index values by clicking on those two links at the top. That now comes through, that gives you the sire. And in this case, 25 different dams. So we've got the dam there, 
and the expected average progeny value below that. So we can look at that sire, if you like, we've got that sire, we're going to work out what dams we're going to mate him to, and we can go down that list and then look at which, what the different outcomes of the matings are and um, see how we go. So that's one particular way of doing it. And then, so at the moment, that gives us the first sire with 25 dams. We could then click on this next value, um, and that would then take us to the next sire and the, the 25 dams. So we can look at it basically with one sire and all the dams that are available. Or the other way we can go, which I'll go back and do now, is, um, so we just go back to the mating predictor. So we'll go right back to here. To, to the, where we were in that screen and we'll just let the computer catch up because I think I've clicked on back a few times there so and rather now than putting sire we'll click on the dam field and if we click search now you'll see the outcome the output is displayed in a slightly different manner so rather than having the sire at the top and all the possible dams we've now got each dam and the particular size that we specified. So we can go through and we're doing our matings and say, okay, we're going to work out which bull we're going to put this dam to. This is the expected outcomes of that mating and we can make our mating decision. Um, we can then go click on next and that will then take us through to the next dam. We can have a look at that, make our mating predictions and so forth. So likewise, we go to next and again, we go through and we, we just go through our different dams. So that's how it's going at the moment. Um, I think it, it's, it's quite a useful tool. It's, it's fairly flexible in, in how you use it. So you've got a number of different options there available to you. Um, but, but hopefully you, once you get in there, it's fairly user friendly um, and you should be able to go through and, and um, you know, get something out of it. So I think it, it's, it's quite a useful tool now. Uh, when you're looking at your expected outcomes of your particular matings. Now I'm just looking here um, just for some more questions. We have uh, one question here which is looking at, at the moment it only lets you search for six bulls maximum. So if, we, if I click back on the mating predictor, you are limited, yes, by the number of sires which you can put into that field. Now, the, the reason for that is when we start putting in more than around six sires, and if you're running that over your female imagery, which might have a, a couple of hundred cows in it, then it starts to become um, quite a complex little um, thing behind the scenes. And with that number, if it's deemed with a bit more than six, then it might be too complex an operation for a lot of our internet connections, and it might actually um, not work as effectively. So the program has put a limitation there into to six size. We are looking at, at possibly raising that up to eight, um, but you will be limited in some ways by the amount of size that you've got. So in that case, you'd need to put in, say, the, if you had ten size, you were looking at probably the first five size and do it and then do the next five size. But um, we are limited a little bit by the, the programming and internet type of capabilities of this system along those lines. Um, the next question which has come in, which is, is quite an obvious one, um, is if I have um, 100 different dams, there, so more than 100 dams on my female imagery, can I bring those all up um, or, or what options do you have available? At the moment, my understanding of this program is the upper limit that you have here is 100. So you can only select to do 100 dams at one time. And, and the reason for that is, is similar to the number of sires in that once we get above that, then com, um, you know, it becomes quite a complex little calculation and uh, it can make the system not work very effectively. So what the only option that you have at the moment, I can see, um, is to limit what your particular dam um, selection. So you could put in, for example, my female imagery, you want to select 100 dams, but if you have less than 100 dams in each particular calving year, you can go through and put in here, say 2006, click on select, and that will just do your 2006 dams at one particular time. So you could get around it. Um, in that particular fashion. That, that's the only way I can see at the moment that you'd be able to do it. You do have different options down here on, on 
sorting your dams as to which 100 dams will display, um, but I don't think that will be uh, quite as effective. So I'd be suggesting to you, if you are in that um, case where you've got more than 100 dams on your female imagery, then you start just running different calving years at one particular time. Um, well, I think that almost gets us through uh, the webinar tonight. I don't think I've got any questions there um, that, that we haven't answered. So. Um, I, I hope this has, has been a useful exercise and your, your inbreeding uh, kind of webinar has, has worked well at your end. Uh, this is a, a, a product which in terms of the webinars that, that we are quite excited about and, and see to be quite useful. What I will just, um, just finish on is if I just go back to our, our presentation, if you have any more uh, questions about this particular uh, product, whether it be the using the webinar or um, using the, the mating predictor, then obviously there are, there are two main people that you can contact. Um, you're more than welcome to, to contact myself there. I've got a, uh, a phone number there um, and an email address. I will just let you know I will be out of the office uh, for the next two weeks. So um, if, you, if you're after me, then um, my mobile is, is probably the best bet. Uh, we're just out uh, running some workshops. So um, if you, my mobile number, um, if you have a pen handy, is 0418. 412042. Alternatively, if you ring that phone number on the screen there, um, on my message, it'll have my uh, mobile number for you. Uh, the other person that you can contact, obviously, as, al as always, is the Executive Officer of the Murray Gray Society in Di McLeish. Um, Di is fairly clued up on this, this mating predictor as well, so um, if you give her a call, she should be able to run you through it. So I think that's if we don't have any more questions. Um, which I'll just have a look here at the list, no new ones have come up. Um, so I think that almost brings us to a close. In closing, I will just mention, um, as I said, I will be out of the office for the next two weeks. Uh, we'll be running these series of Know Your Genes workshops, uh, which are workshops to do with uh, just an update on the different DNA technology that's available and how you can apply that within your operation. Um, so th these are running this week uh, through New South Wales, so we'll be in Tamworth tomorrow, Orange on Wednesday, Goulburn on Thursday and uh, Holbrook on Friday. We'll then be moving through Queensland and, and Victoria um, in the coming weeks. So I'd encourage you if you're interested in DNA technology and, and possibly how you can apply that within your operation, um, that you, you come along to those workshops. Um, there are plenty of places available at those workshops, so these ones during this week uh, particularly. So if you would like to come along, um, then please just give us a ring over the next couple of days and, and let us know you're coming um, and we'll sort it out for catering. So um, we'll hope to, hope to see you all there. But with that, that will bring me to an end. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this webinar and good night.